Okay, guys, so we reviewed Roanoke, and we kind of reviewed again Jamestown. The one thing I really don't think we spent time on was Plymouth. Now, luckily, you should have spent a big chunk of time on this in third grade. So circling back to this, I think, should be kind of easy. So remember that um, of these early English settlements, people coming to Roanoke in um, 1587, one of the attempts, right, landing in North Carolina, looking for that chance for a better life. 20 years later, well, let me back up because, of course, we know it doesn't go so well. When the whole colony disappears, we can't really call it a success, can we? Um, the mystery of Roanoke continues. 20 years later, a group of uh, initially male settlers uh, come to Jamestown, Virginia. They're here for money, here for gold, here for riches, right? Um, but they're not here to work very hard, or and they're not here because they know what to do. So that's a big mistake for them, but they do find tobacco grows well and they are able to survive and make a thriving colony even with a little bit of um, democracy um, under the guise of a legislature the house of burgess is thrown in so let's do a, we're going to do a quick check today about pilgrims in plymouth and this is the spelling the modern spelling of like the town of plymouth in massachusetts today um you'll see sometimes it's spelled p-l-i-m-o-t-h you'll see me do that that's the spelling as it was back then so this woman, and the only woman of the three, right, saying, I went to Plymouth to find religious freedoms. So that is a key point to think about um, how the pilgrims, leaving England in 1620 and late in 1620, by the way, right, um, end up sailing, they should have sailed further south, end up by accident here in Massachusetts, um, and the rest, as we say, is history. So I'm going to read this text to you. Feel free to follow along or just read the whole text on your own. I think I'm also going to share another text if I have time to record another video right now. So again, this is all just background information that we're gathering um, and synthesizing to think about how then we might do eventually this other project on our own. Okay, so here's the same text that I have as it, as it looks on my website um, for Social Studies Alive or History Alive. And I'm going to go ahead. I remember I told you I liked when we kind of highlight those main ideas of the text. And then I'm going to zoom through this text for you guys. For zip. Zoom. Okay. All right. The third English settlement in North America was started by people who were looking for religious freedom. King James I said that everyone in England had to belong to the Church of England, but some people refused. Among them were people called separatists, a group that wanted to have a separate or independent church. This is something I could spend a lot of time talking about with you guys. In fact, I may go back and add more here, since this is kind of a quick text, um, to give you some more knowledge about this. The separatists decided to move to a place where they could be free to practice their own religion. In time, this group came to be known as Pilgrim. So one of your vocabulary words this week is Pilgrim, lowercase b, meaning a person who goes on a journey for religious reasons. Um, that's why we call them Pilgrims, because they left for that freedom. They call themselves separatists, or sometimes they call themselves brownists, actually. In September of 1620, the Pilgrims sailed from England. You might remember they were supposed to leave two months earlier on a different ship, and that ship got a leak. They were traveling a ship called the Mayflower. After more than two months at sea, they landed on the tip of Cape Cod in what is now Massachusetts. Before going ashore, the Pilgrims drew up a new, a new plan of government. They wrote down a set of rules called the Mayflower Compact, compact being one of your other um, vocab words, right, in agreement, to help them live together peacefully. After most of the men signed this agreement, they elected John Carver, uh-oh, another John, as the governor. After exploring the area, the Pilgrims decided to sail the Mayflower across a bay that separated them from the mainland. We kind of know, right, I don't know if I can turn on here or not, um, that, I'm going to see if I can turn on here, I don't think it will let me, that um, they originally landed, they explored a lot of the outer cape, if you can picture like the elbow of the cape, and they eventually sailed then over, hold on a second, kind of hard to see, but if you, you can imagine that, let me zoom in a little bit maybe, Okay, that looks good. So the Pilgrims initially were out here on the outer cape um, and, and first make their kind of first stop up at the tip, right? If you're familiar with Cape Cod at Provincetown. Later then other groups were sailing across, this is what they're talking about, right across Cape Cod Bay and had found the perfect spot. Who knew? And like that it was uninhabited. And I think I started to give you guys hints about the school, about what really had happened to in this space um, that there um, was called Patuxet before they actually got there. So after exploring the area, the Pilgrims decided to sail the Mayflower across the bay that separated from the mainland. They landed at a place they named Plymouth. Soon they began to build houses and meeting in a meeting hall they called the Common House. So this is, remember, this is December of 1620. The first winter was difficult. Pilgrims had landed 
too late in the year to plant crops, and they faced a cold and hard climate. Nearly half of the 102 pilgrims died of disease and starvation before the spring. Only a few settlers remained healthy enough to care for the others. I do want you to know, too, that not everyone, not everyone of that 102, or maybe a little bit more, were that group, the pilgrims were separatists. Some of them were people who came with them in order to start a colony to make money. So it wasn't that every single person was part of actually their religious group. In March of 1621, the pilgrims' luck finally improved. Yeah, it did, right? A man named Squanto, a member of the Patuxet tribe who was living with the nearby Wampanoags, visited the pilgrims. Some years earlier, Squanto had lived in England and could speak English. This is like a game changer, and this is a cool story. I want to tell you more about this later. Squanto stayed with the pilgrims and taught them how to plant corn, catch fish, and get sweet syrup from maple trees. The pilgrims were so grateful that they thought Squanto had been sent by God. Squanto also told the pilgrims about the many American Indians who had died from a disease that they had caught from the English and French fishermen. While Squanto had been away in England, the members of his Patuxet tribe had died from the sickness, probably, right, smallpox, measles, other germs, and that actually the place that the pilgrims chose to settle, which I think I showed you guys a picture of, um, I will show it to you again later if I can't right now, that picture, that village where the pilgrims eventually settled was actually had been Squanto's village before he left. Another American Indian who visited the pilgrims was Massasoit. He was the sachem or chief of the Wampanoags. Squanto helped arrange a peace treaty or agreement between Massasoit and the pilgrims. The Wampanoags and the pilgrims promised not to fight each other. They also agreed to help protect each other against attack from other Indians. I want you to think about Squanto's role in this. He's very important and very involved. Um, but Squanto definitely is looking out to support Squanto, and I don't really blame him after what he's been through, to be honest. The pilgrims' corn ripened during the summer, and in the fall, they held a feast to give thanks for the harvest, the food they had collected from the plants they had grown. Massasoit and other Wampanoags came to the celebration with deer to cook and eat. I think you guys know this from second grade, uh, third grade. I think you guys did a little research on it, but, um, you know, these pictures of all of them sitting at a big dining room table, that's, that's false. Um, and it may have been more that the natives were heard the celebrating of the pilgrims and were attracted to come by for that. Um, they didn't certainly sit, hold hands, and, and you know, share food. It wasn't quite like that. The pilgrims had goose, duck, deer, fish, lobster, and wild turkey. The Thanksgiving feast lasted three days. Today, people in the United States still observe this harvest celebration on the holiday called Thanksgiving Day, which didn't become a holiday till actually the Civil War time period around you know, the 1860s. In 1621, John Carver and William John Carver died, and Plymouth needed a new governor. William Bradford was elected to this post. He was governor of Plymouth for the next 30 years. He's an important figure that you can learn more about. In the next few years, ships brought more and more settlers to the colony, and in time, other groups would join the pilgrims in the area that we now call New England. Um, so when we talk about Massachusetts as a colony, um, Plymouth was actually a separate colony. So Massachusetts Bay was one colony, and Plymouth was one colony, and they did eventually merge, I think, in the late um, 1600s to become one colony of Massachusetts. Um, people who came to Massachusetts Bay are Puritans, who are not the same as pilgrims, but they both began with a P and they both came here for religious reasons. It's a little confusing. Let's do the check for understanding. Okay, so like the other days, we have three questions. It says select three problems the Plymouth colonists faced. Okay, A, Wampanoag American Indians were not nice to them. Now, I have to be honest, I bristle at this a little bit because it's like, why do the Indians have to be nice to them? We, I mean, we kind of obviously know what happened. So um, it's a little annoying. That's an even annoying thought. But no, we know that's not true anyway. But I think the Indians didn't have to be nice to them. They didn't want to be. Disease killed half of them in the first winter, half of the Plymouth colonists. Yes, it did. When they arrived at Plymouth, it was too late to plant crops. Yep, it was, because it was November. They were supposed to arrive at the end of the summer, right? Um, on their first ship, they would have had time to plant some things, although they still weren't very well prepared to do that and or knew what to do. It was all thanks to Squanto that helped them figure that out. Were they calling this, were they not allowed freedom of religion back home in England? Yep, that is true. Okay, as they were told, um, King James wanted everyone to, to practice religion the way he wanted them to, and they wanted to be able to practice religion the way they wanted to. Let's check. Okay, nice job. Um, so I think I'm going to add in, I may make a separate video. E either I'm going to make my own video or I might share someone else's video of reading this book called Squanto County. Because I just would like to give you a little more information about him. It's kind of an interesting um, perspective. And I don't want us to lose sight of um, what 
the thoughts and feelings were maybe of the people who lived here first. Um, okay, my friends, thanks for checking in on this today. Keep practicing your vocab. We had a video for that too. And I hope that you guys are having a great day.